Last night on the show, we discussed the threat that artificial intelligence poses to American jobs. It's profound. Our leaders are ignoring that threat. They want to import more and more low-skilled labor. So Washington's not going to help you, that's for sure. They're making it worse. You're on your own on this one. So what can individuals do to survive an economy that is devaluing labor and, in a lot of cases, making it obsolete? Isaac Morris has thought a lot about this. He's the founder and CEO of Praxis, and he joins us tonight, one of our favorite guests. Isaac, thanks a lot for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me. So you've seen, obviously, these forecasts. They've come from a lot of different places. 60 Minutes this coming weekend is going to have a pretty scary uh, one. But that some huge percentage of American jobs are going away. Let's see, you're 22 entering the job market. What's your defense against this? Yeah, so the first thing is what you kind of led with is to bring it back to what you have control over. So rather than letting yourself kind of getting consumed by fear of what will right. or won't happen in the macro economy, say, okay, okay, what can I do personally? What do I have control over? And the first thing is robots, machines, what are they really good at? Following rules. So anything right. that involves a lot of rule following, I wouldn't be investing resources, energy, time in learning and building those kind of skills. I would be focusing right. more on rule breaking, on innovation, on entrepreneurship. And that is one of the challenges. Most of us, the, the sort of school system, the kind of the innovation, the entrepreneurship, it almost gets schooled out of us because it's all about rule following and you know learning sure. to do exactly what's on the test. And entrepreneurship in the school context is called cheating, <laughs> you know, creative problem solving. So I think breaking out of that mindset and, and not looking at it like, okay, I need to go and study and get certified and do what I'm told, and then I will be able to have a career, but rather, hey, if I want to do something, if I want to be the next Tucker Carlson, go start a podcast, go start a YouTube channel, get your hands dirty, try and fail, experiment and tinker. I think that's the biggest thing. Well, it's such a wise point. Uh, clearly, there's a, I mean, I'm all for following rules, but there's also a downside, and our schools seem to be getting more rigid, less open to creativity, less open to unorthodox thinking. So, th I mean, that's a bad yeah. trend then. It is, and it's the nature and the structure of you know a math system that's trying to push everybody through and same age group cohorts and you know right. it, you you have to think beyond that kind of traditional rule following idea and you've got to just look at the opportunity that's out there at Praxis. We work with young people all the time and we focus on trying to help them develop skills that are ultimately transferable and in demand no matter what because. The jobs that are around today, nobody knew these were going to be here 20 years ago. And the same thing is true of the future. We don't know exactly what opportunities are there. So having skills that are very transferable and adaptable, you know, being creative and imaginative, communication skills, you know, the ability to work in teams, to, to cast a vision and to recruit people behind that vision. These sound like kind of fluffy, soft skills. But yeah. honestly, those are the things that are the most uniquely human and the things that are hardest for machines to replace. And I think where you get the most return on your investment. Interesting. So you sound a little less worried. <laughs> I am. I mean, I'm optimistic by nature, but I see the opportunity there. And I see that the young yep. people we work with, you know, they're able to seize this. And I, I like uh, investor Mike Maples said once that, you know, I don't want a future where everybody's worried about robots taking their jobs. I want a future where everybody has their own personal Iron Man suit. And that's the, <laughs> the vision that I can get behind. And I think I hope you'll, I I hope you'll create when I could probably use one. <laughs> Isaac, Isaac, we're out of time. It's great to see you. Thank you for that. That was a nice way to end the week. Thanks for having me. One last thought, though, on low-skill workers. Uh, they are being displaced. They're getting poorer. But America's wealthy are getting richer by the year. We want to put that in some context. You may have heard that Amazon CEO and the overlord of the Washington Post, Jeff Bezos, is getting divorced. We're not going to get into the personal drama, obviously. But we will tell you this. The Bezos family fortune is $137 billion. Our GDP of the country is 19 point three nine trillion dollars that means one american divorce court overseeing one divorce has 0.7 percent of the country's entire gdp in the balance <laughs> one divorce almost a full percentage point of gdp unbelievable tells you a lot that's it for us tonight we'll be back monday 8 p.m the show that is the sworn enemy of lying pomposity smugness and groupthink most important have a great weekend Everybody's earned it after a week like this. Next week's going to be unbelievable.